General Turner, this is Brian Whitman at the Pentagon. Can you hear me? I sure can, Brian. How you doing? Good. We just need a little volume in the briefing room, please. Well, uh, sir, uh, thank you for uh, staying with us as we work through some of these uh, technical problems. I, I think we've got the power fixed on your end there. And I would like to welcome you back. I think the last time you talked to this group in the uh, briefing room was in January sometime. Uh, this is uh, Major General Tom Turner. He is the commander of Multinational Division North, as well as the uh, commander of the 101st uh, Airborne Division. He is at his headquarters uh, at Forward Operating Base Spiker, uh, outside of Tikrit, uh, where his unit is responsible for the ongoing security operations in uh, northern Iraq. Uh, Sir, I think that you have a few comments that you'd like to make and give us a bit of an overview of what you've been doing, and then we'll get right into the questions. I do. Uh, good morning. Before I uh, take your questions, I'd like to give you a rundown of the current status and progress made in our area of Iraq, that area known as Area of Operations North. Our area comprises six of the northern provinces that run from east of Baghdad north to the border with Turkey. It's bounded in the east by Iran and in the west by Syria. The key cities in our area are Mosul, Talafra, Kirkuk, Beji, Samara, Bakuba, Sulaymaniya, and Dahuk. Our end state in Iraq has not changed. Is an Iraq at peace with its neighbors, an ally in the war on terror, with a representative government that respects the human rights of all Iraqis and an Iraqi security force capable of providing domestic order and denying safe haven to terrorists. Our role in achieving that end state focuses toward the last portion, an Iraqi security force capable of providing domestic order and denying safe haven to terrorists. We are partnered with four of the 10 Iraqi Army divisions they consist of 15 brigades and a total of 59 battalions. Of those 15 brigades, three are in the lead in their area of operations, and 18 of the battalions are in the lead. By the end of the summer, we anticipate two of the four divisions being in the lead. All Iraqi Army, Army units in AO North are in the fight. Those that have not assumed an area of operations, it is generally due to the lack of equipment or specialized training. And those units are fighting alongside ours. We anticipate all units of the Iraqi Army and our AO operating in the lead by early next year. It will be some time before these units are rated at level one and prepared to conduct independent operations. The major inhibitor to independent operations is lack of equipment, manpower, their inability to sustain themselves, and a lack of systems or policies in place to manage the organization. Turning to Iraqi police forces, we have established police transition teams in all the major cities and provincial capitals in our area. We have completed assessments of these police forces and continue to assess district headquarters and stations throughout the area of operations. There are a total of six provincial department headquarters, 61 district headquarters, and 340 stations. As you would expect, they run the gamut from poorly trained to well prepared to provide domestic order. We're partnered with U.S. forces. They are progressing rapidly. As you would expect, they are plagued with the same administrative and logistical shortcomings as the Army. There are five border police brigades in the area of operations. U.S. border transition teams that aid in advising and training those border police have been in place on the Syrian border for several months now. We are just beginning the trans to get the transition teams to those brigades along the Iranian border, although those Iraqi units have been established for some time. Turning to the threat in our area, we have seen very limited secular tensions. Most acts of secular violence has occurred within the Diyala province where you have a large population of Sunni and Shia Arabs living together. Some of the secular violence in Diyala would appear to emanate in Baghdad and spill over into the province. Much of Diyala, 
much of Diala could best be described as a suburb of Baghdad. The greatest threat to long-term stability in Iraq remains al-Qaeda in Iraq, led by Zarqawi. Foreign terrorists continue to make their way into the community, and there's a homegrown element of the organization throughout our AO. The more success we have against al-Qaeda, the more willing the Iraqi citizens are to report terrorist activity. And with that, I'll uh, stop and uh, be happy to take your questions. Thank you, General, and uh, we'll get right into it. Bob? General, Bob Burns from AP. I'd like to ask you about the situation out there along the Iranian border. Uh, I think we've heard some bits and pieces about uh, <coughs> clashes between with involving Iranian forces and Kurds. Can you explain what, what's going on out there? That, uh, uh, of course, is uh, a very long border with Iran. It goes uh, from where it intersects with Turkey, which is up in the north part of Dehuk province, it goes all the way uh, uh, south. Uh, the area where the uh, reported uh, fight occurred was uh, due north of Erbil in uh, a very restricted terrain, very mountainous terrain. And uh, the reports are that uh, Iranians uh, attempted to come across and uh, and also shelled uh, three cities. And the Iraqi government is uh, uh, dealing with that issue now. We do not have any Americans along the border up in that area. Just a quick follow-up. Do you, do you intend to, I think you, might, you referred to transition teams going out in that area. Is that the limit of what you intend to have in terms of an American presence out there? Uh, that's correct. Transition teams, how many people or how many teams are going out? Transition teams are 12, and right now we have uh, five uh, teams in the Diala province. They're married up with battalions and brigades. Uh, in uh, Erbil, there is only a, a transition team with the, the brigade. <coughs> Uh, General, this is Will Dunham with Reuters. Could you describe the situation in Kirkuk? Uh, for example, uh, what are you seeing in the way of an increased presence by Shiites and Shiite militias? Uh, how much of an influx of previously displaced Kurds uh, are you seeing? And what's the state of ethnic and sectarian tensions there? I would say that uh, the Iraqi army and the Iraqi police uh, in that region of Kirkuk are uh, some of the strongest we have working in our AO. And uh, they manage uh, to limit ethnic uh, violence. Uh, we have seen some movement of uh, uh, militias into the area. Uh, Badr Corps has been there for, for quite a while. Uh, and uh, they are basically uh, unarmed, and the IP and IA are managing uh, to control them. I think uh, Colonel Gray talked to you about this uh, a couple weeks ago. He, of course, is our brigade commander up in Kirkuk. General Peter Spiegel with the Los Angeles <coughs> Times. Um, can you talk a bit about the Turkish border? You know, the, the Turks have been rather worried about uh, the PKK and, and the Kurds in the north and, you know, allege that there's terrorist activity going on from the Iraqi side. There's been rumors and gossip about Turks actually moving in across the border to try to deal with some of that. Can you talk about that a bit? And on a completely separate topic, just give us an update on your basing up there. We talk, heard some talk about consolidation of U.S. basing in the north. Can you just give us a picture of where we are now? Sure. The uh, second question first. We have uh, been consolidating bases, and we've been turning uh, bases over to uh, the Iraqi army. We anticipate that by this summer we'll be operating from uh, approximately eight bases that are U.S. only, and uh, the remainder of the ones that we want to operate from will actually have been turned over to the Iraqi army and will keep uh, forces there as required. On the Turkish uh, border, of course, uh, we have a great interaction uh, uh, with the Turks and, uh, and the Kurds there, 
and uh, the, the Turks have LNOs in uh, uh, our headquarters in Mosul, and there's a Turkish LNO in uh, uh, our headquarters in Kirkuk, and uh, the constant communication helps to prevent uh, incidents along uh, that border. All right, guys, follow up real quickly. Ahead. You said you're hoping to get to eight bases. Um, where, where, where is that down from? And where was the? How many bases did you have operating previously? I think uh, the original number we started with was about 24 or 25. Uh, I I can get you that number. I I don't remember it exactly. Yes, sir. <laughs> oh, and, and sorry. How and how many now? Uh. I have to count them here. Uh, 12. We're operating from 12 right now, I think. Uh, General Gordon Lubold from Army Times. You mentioned uh, earlier the lack of equipment, manpower, systems, and policies. Some of the things, challenges you see with uh, getting ISF uh, up and running to be in the lead. Can you just elaborate a little bit more on that and what you're doing to, to kind of address those problems? Sure. Uh, this Army was uh, grown from the bottom up, and uh, uh, we've trained great Iraqi companies uh, and battalions, and they're still lacking some equipment. As, as you start developing the institution from, from the top up, uh, there are there are policies and systems that need to be put in place to administratively and logistically support the force. Uh, I would suspect that once the government is seated and a Minister of Defense is named and they can get on uh, with establishing that bureaucracy that will cause soldiers to get paid religiously in a, in a timely manner, uh, that will allow promotions, that will allow uh, uh, resupply of uh, fuel, that will allow contracts for uh, uh, food and life support to be standardized uh, that, that will move out uh, very quickly. General, I realize that we've reached the end of our original time. Do you, we started about 19 minutes late, though. Do you have some time on your schedule that we can continue for a few more minutes? Sure. I can give you about five more minutes. Very good. Thanks. Pam. Pam Hess with UPI. Um, could you explain to us how it is that, uh, I, I understand the, the shortcomings on the Iraqi government side, but the U.S. has been training and equipping Iraqi forces for quite a long time, spent billions of dollars. So uh, the question occurs to me, why, even if the Iraqi government isn't providing the equipment they need, why hasn't the U.S.? What, what's been the problem there? And then on a separate uh, question, uh, could you tell us a little bit about Bakuba? There were two recently announced big captures of Al Qaeda in Iraq there, and I'm wondering if uh, that has made a, if you've seen a significant uh, improvement in the security situation there, because I know for the last six months Bakuba has been sort of crazy. Uh, on the first one on equipment, it's just uh, a normal schedule that uh, we were on in uh, in providing equipment. Uh, Next month, they should begin fielding uh, uh, armored vehicles uh, to the Iraqi uh, uh, forces, and uh, their supply parts uh, for uh, equipment will begin to flow. So I, I think it's just a, a natural timeline that uh, uh, is occurring here. And your second question was about AQIZ and uh, Bakuba. Uh, I, I think we are making uh, great great strides in uh, uh, the war against al-Qaeda. Uh, I think uh, the uh, last week there was an attack, seemed to be a rather coordinated attack in Bakuba. Uh, the AQIZ uh, claimed responsibility for it with six separate attacks, uh, all preceded by indirect fire, and the Iraqi army and Iraqi uh, police uh, held their own and uh, won that battle. As we uh, take al-Qaeda leaders off the street, yes, we, we see occasionally uh, some, or not occasionally, but we do see an improvement in the security environment. 
Al-Qaeda uh, works very hard to quickly replace those leaders that are killed. Uh, but for instance, we have done the same uh, in areas east and west of Samarra, and we have seen uh, uh, improvements within the city itself once uh, we know these uh, Al-Qaeda leaders are dead or captured. General, I think that uh, we've kind of uh, completed uh, what our questions were here. Uh, and actually, we have, let's make this one last follow up here and then we'll let you go. Uh, how, this is Pam Passigan. How many armored vehicles for the Iraqis and, and what kind are they? The ones that the divisions that we partner with are supposed to get are the up armored uh, Humvees. And they're getting a certain number per per unit. We're not saying that for operational reasons, or you just don't have the numbers at your, at your fingertips? I, I believe the divisions get 259, if uh, I remember correctly. Well, General, again, uh, thank you for, for joining us this morning. Uh, let me, just before I close it, ask you if there's anything else that you wanted to say before we do that. Yeah, I would uh, like to tell you about uh, the fantastic sons and daughters of America that are over here, uh, your soldiers. I think you should be extremely proud of uh, this young generation of Americans. They're uh, probably the smartest, most physically and mentally tough uh, soldiers our, our nation's ever produced. Uh, they believe in each other and uh, they believe in uh, what they're doing and just doing a marvelous job here. And they certainly appreciate, understand, and appreciate the support of the American people and, and the Congress. Well, thank you very much. Thank you, General, and, and, uh, and for everything that the 101st is doing there.